Hello and welcome to Lot 49. Today we will be going over the local council election results in England and trying to pick out some implications from them. To start, let's clarify what local government does in England since the term gets bandied about a lot but never really explained. There are 318 local councils in England, which are split up into different categories, each with their own set of legal responsibilities. These responsibilities can include schools, social care, waste collection, housing and planning, transport and roads, business support, pest control, licensing and registrar services. In England, local government accounts for almost 25% of public expenditure. 52% of the money spent by local governments comes from the national government through the Public Health Grant, the Revenue Support Grant and the redistribution of business rates. While the other 48% comes from locally raised funds such as council taxes, retained business rates and other resources. OK, with that out of the way, what were the results of the local elections held on the 4th of May? 230 of the 318 English councils held elections. The Conservative Party received a net loss of 957 council members. The Labour Party received a net gain of 643 council members. The Liberal Democrats received a net gain of 415 council members. The Green Party received a net gain of 200 council members. And smaller parties and independents received a net loss of 385 council members. Overall, the Conservatives lost control of 48 councils, while Labour gained 22, the Lib Dems gained 12, and the Greens gained 1 with the remaining 13 councils falling under no party's control. The turnout of voters ranged from 32% to as low as 18% in some areas. This is not unusual for English local elections and can be due to voters being disenchanted with politics, not knowing there is a local election going on, or not having any idea of what local government does, and hence not seeing any reason to care. That the low turnout is not unusual is in a way good, since it indicates that the Conservative Party's recent introduction of a voter ID law has not had the predicted effect of suppressing the vote among the poorest members of society. Despite the Labour Party taking a great many seats and councils from the Conservatives, their share of a vote here suggests that they will not be able to form a majority at the next general election. In polling, the Labour Party's lead over the Conservatives was 5% in 2022 and 7% in 2023. But despite their lead increasing, their share of the vote remained at 35%. This indicates that their increasing lead is due to the Conservatives doing worse rather than the Labour Party becoming more appealing. This is probably because of the Conservatives' lack of direction, leadership disputes and that Brexit is no longer a key issue. Keir Starmer's election strategy of appealing to the right by cutting everything left-wing from his platform ultimately means that while he may pick up some former right-wing establishment voters, any self-respecting lefty ditches the party. I had voted for Labour, or more specifically Jeremy Corbyn in 2019, but I wouldn't vote for the party now, given their current policies and decisions. They have drifted to the far right, and you can't beat the right by voting for them. To add insult to injury, when Labour's own General Secretary went door-knocking for their candidate in Bromborough, they not only lost all the seats up for grabs, but failed to oust Joe Baird, a former party member. After being kicked out of a party for her commitment to left-wing causes, Bird joined the Green Party, and in this election she managed to secure more votes than she had while a Labour councillor. Notably, the other councillors to win seats in Bromborough this time were Ruth Molyneux and Kieran Murphy, both members of the Green Party. 
Overall, the Green Party's vote share in the local council elections tripled, while they more than doubled their number of councillors in local councils. They now hold a record 770 seats across the country. This recent surge in the Green Party's success started around the time Keir Starmer took over as leader of the Labour Party in 2020. Hmm, I wonder if there's a connection there. Anyway, quite why disenchanted Conservative voters would switch to a Workers' Party, even if in name only, eludes me. Personally, I think they would be more likely to join the Lib Dems. The Lib Dems being the country's equivalent of the Baby Bear Party. If the Tories are too nasty to minorities, and the Labour Party reeks too much of the underprivileged working class, then the Lib Dems are just right, not too offensive, and they don't reek of the unwashed masses. However, while we may study election results in a hope to predict the future, we don't really know why people vote the way they do. Is it creatively in the hopes of securing a better future for themselves and those they care about? Or is it defensively to try and prevent a party they don't like from coming to power? Or is it down to one issue, a particular brand, or psychological association? So overall, the Conservative Party took a beating, while all the other parties made gains, and despite their gains, the Labour Party did not get enough of a vote share to indicate that they would win a majority at the next general election, at least based on this limited sample. Anyway, that's it for this video. Sources and citations can be found down in the description and in the credits. If you want to explore those topics further, the Canary, the British Workers' Party and Squawk Box are good places to start. As with all video channels, please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe. So until next time, have a good evening.